So as Jeff mentioned, when, to go down to that apex, it's very important to be measuring what's happening at that apex. An alternative, again, you could use a radial scan and then just take your cursor and rotate it until it's hitting where you know from your topography or tomography the apex actually is, or the utilization of the 3D scan where that chunk is going to be covering the apex of that cone, and then again, you could take your uh, line and go up and down through that as well. All right, so once we do that cross scan and we've evaluated the central part of the lens, then we focus in on where that lens is gonna land on the cornea or on the sclera. So in the case of a hybrid lens, uh, it's gonna land somewhere on the peripheral cornea and we wanna know how it's landing, make sure it's not bearing. In the case of a scleral, we wanna make sure what it's doing way at the periphery and to do that, we just have the patient look straight ahead and we move the machine over and take a line scan right through the area of where it may be uh, landing. When, I'm going to ask you a question. I didn't mm -hmm. actually ask you this before. Mm -hmm. When and if, oh, actually, how am I questioning you? When do you actually do a line scan peripherally along the verticals? Or do you ever? I, I will do that. I will spin, because in, in the OptiView, what you can do is, if you take a line scan, you can actually click on the line with the, the mouse, and then the mouse has a little roller on it, and you can actually rotate that line in real time and you will actually see. And so, you know, Mary Jo, you mentioned, you know, my techs doing this. My techs are doing the procedure about 50% of the time, but 50% of the time I'm in there because you can get so much information by just fiddling around with it and, and figuring out exactly where those bearing zones are and rotating the line around and getting images that you want to see exactly rather than having your technician guess at what you want to see. Um, th I'll never forget this. I got a phone call in the middle of the day from an extremely prominent scleral lens fitter. And that, when I say extremely prominent, I'm talking like this guy right here, right? It wasn't and my he call. Said, he said, oh my God, I've got this guy with intacts and he's got a posterior epithelial detachment right there. And so I looked back at about 15 of my intact, post-intact scleral lens evaluations, and every single one of them had this. And so we're actually publishing um, a case series of this exact phenomenon, and we're gonna attempt to explain why this happens, but I can assure you this is not a posterior epithelial uh, detachment, this is just an artifact. This is uh, index of refraction issues with the, uh, with the um Intex. Yeah, and if you notice, what happens is it's always along the meridian here that is coincident with where the LED light source is coming from. So there's some kind of internal scatter going on here, and it's projecting it down into the anterior There's setting. another point. I mean, I'm sorry. If, if you look at this, look at the orientation, right? This is a horizontal line scan. Did we just lose that? Here we go. Horizontal line scan. And so this posterior detachment would be defying gravity right now it would be pointing straight into the anterior chamber. So what's also very interesting to note when dealing with patients with, uh, with corneal rings like Intex, if you can go back for one second, on that, you know, there's always this issue, oh, it's so hard to fit contact lenses post Intex. Well, actually not with sclerals it isn't. I mean, you're vaulting it. You know, the biggest concern is that you're going to be bearing over that area of the uh, anterior cornea that might be anteriorly displaced somewhat. And as you can see, you're getting just, you know, fine uh, vaulting over that particular section. And, yeah. Great peripheral alignment, as we know, what we want our scleral lenses to do over the uh, bulbar conjunctival surface versus compressing, which we don't want. And, um, oh, yeah, I, so I wanted to, let me just borrow that for a quick second. This was a case that I was uh, referring before when we did the cross scan here, and you could see along the horizontal and even along that vertical how the difference in the vault on that tremendously irregular cornea is, where you're getting, well, what looks like it's almost bearing right here and very significant vault right over here. So when we saw this, we wanted to know kind of what was going on down in that area. So what we ended up doing was there, a 3D scan, which we then brought down as you can see, down more inferiorly, and you can see it actually does come in contact, and we did have bearing there. Now, what's really interesting 
is, I'll tell you, and also we ran a radial scan, and we were, this is just along this particular meridian, okay, like this, but you can, again, take your cursor and you can rotate it, and that cut that you'll see here will be according to the direction that that particular meridian is within. Now, what's really interesting here is we modified the scleral lens fit for this patient, okay, and we were able to vault over that area of bearing, and everything seemed great. Her vision was acceptable, her comfort was good, she goes, and then she just came back about two weeks ago, and she had diffuse corneal edema. Why? Because we had to vault so much, this became the oxygen issue, I believe, we had to vault so much over the area that was lower to clear the area that was more anteriorly displaced that I believe that we caused a situation of relative hypoxia. So this patient's in kind of like a tough state. and We're actually looking to probably fit her with a actual molded form or eye print type of lens. Barry, I want to go back to this one yep. because I think this is the single most important reason why we need to use anterior segment OCT when we're evaluating sclerals. It is extremely difficult otherwise to see decentration and when a, lateral decentration. And this highlights it perfectly. This is, and this is a right eye. Mm -hmm. The right eye. So that's interesting. I mean, usually in my decentered lenses, I'm seeing them decentered temporally. Which is nasal. So this is a nasal decentration, which in my practice is very rare. But decentration is a big issue with sclerals, and it's not easy to see with a slit lamp view. Oh, so, okay, so we're going into hybrids now. Um, and let's go through this pretty quickly so we have time to, to yeah. evaluate our patients here. Um, evaluating hybrids, it's very easy to see the vaults above the cornea. Here we have a vault of 105 microns, and this is the optimal vault in, um, in, in the ultra health lens. Here we have an excessive vault, and so if you look even at the, in the uh, vertical line scan, you see 231 microns of vault. Uh, which would indicate that you need to decrease the vault of the trial lens that you're putting on. And here's the op opposite problem. This is inadequate central vault. We can see a lucid interval between the back surface of the contact lens and the front surface of the cornea, and that goes away here, indicating that we are bearing on the central cornea, and here is in the vertical scan as well. Um, one of the, the great ways to use anterior segment OCT with hybrids is to assess the inner landing zones. You know, you can see this on a uh, fluorescein evaluation. You can see as we get into the inner landing zone, in other words, the area that contacts the cornea, the mid-peripheral cornea, you can see the dimming of the fluorescein, indicating that that part of the lens is getting closer to the cornea. And then on anterior segment OCT, you can actually image this and you can make sure that you're not bearing into the cornea, that you're just gently landing onto the cornea. Here's an example of, this is a enter segment picture of an area that is bearing too greatly with those inner landing zones. And it takes a while to be able to kind of um, be able to interpret what you're seeing on the fluorescein images, but if you look at the anterior segment OCT, you can see the the really diversion of the cornea here and the bearing of that inner landing zone. And then of course we can use uh, OCT to assess the skirt, the alignment of the skirt. And here on the left we have uh, a skirt that is too steep. And the way that we know that this is too steep is we see all this space behind. And so the skirt is not aligning with the sclera very well. When we flatten the skirt, we can see that it just gently rides right on that sclera and contours really well. You know, one of the other uses uh, of, of the, an the anterior segment OCT is we can create a full mosaic image of any lens that we're looking at. And in this case, uh, it's a hybrid lens. And, you know, it, it's not possible to do this in the software presently, but it's something that we do a lot just to get a global view of that lens on the eye. And so what you can do is you can take a bunch of line scans and you just export them, export them, and then in a PowerPoint presentation, you just line it up just like a puzzle. And it gives you a very good global view of that lens on the eye. And that's perfect timing. Yeah, this is the time that we're gonna have much more fun.